Hi everyone, um, Allison here. So my goal for the next few weeks is to offer uh, what I call a pose clinic. It's basically taking a pose and really breaking it down, which to be honest is not that different than how I normally teach, but it's gonna give us a little bit more time to really dive into poses that are, are done a lot in, the, in a yoga class and you know, most of the time aren't, aren't really taught more than a few cues. Um, if you go to any yoga class, especially a vinyasa or a flow yoga class, you're going to expect, <laughs> you could expect to do down dog like a billion times. That's an exaggeration, but over your yoga career, like down dog is a pose you're gonna do a lot and I wouldn't say it, it bugs me, but it's definitely, in my opinion, not true when, when teachers say things like, down dog is a resting pose. I suppose uh, if you are in like a really challenging flow class, like compared to other poses, well sure, like it, it's easier in a sense than, than certain poses, but, but really there's a lot to a pose like downward facing dog. There's a lot required uh, in terms of flexibility and strength. And there's lots of little things I think um, to think about, even if the teacher isn't necessarily teaching that pose. So my goal this week is to break down downward facing dog because you're gonna do that pose a ton. Uh, next week we'll we'll get into chaturanga, which if we had our entire lifetime we could probably never fully <laughs> grasp the complexity that is chaturanga, the yoga push up, and then. The week after, we'll get into upward facing dog. Um, because if you add those three poses together, those are really the main elements to a sun salutation, Surya Namaskar A. Um, I love flow yoga, like that's what one of the first styles of yoga I, I practiced, but I do think the bummer news about it, if you're not practicing any other kinds of yoga, is you really miss out on like learning these poses and the little details that I think not only make them more interesting, like, this is why yoga never will bore me because it's super interesting. Like, what is my tricep doing? What are what are my upper trapezius doing? Um, but also to do them safely. Like, we're humans and we're we're upright on our feet. That's like how we're built. So these poses where we're weight bearing in the hands, down dog, chaturanga, up dog. My opinion is that we we should do them safely and you know as wisely as possible. So we will just explore down dog a little bit. Um, I'm going to use some terms and probably be more technical than some of you are used to. If half of what I say you're like, I don't know what the hell she's talking about, it's fine. <laughs> just keep following along and you'll pick little pieces up along the way. Um, chances are you've heard some of these things before. If you've ever taken class with me or, or most teachers at my studio, you've heard it before. You just Sometimes you're just not ready to hear it till you're ready to hear it. So get all the props. I've got two blocks, a strap, and a blanket. And set yourself up at a wall if you can. Um, the wall is gonna be helpful here. Um, our purpose is to really break down the pieces needed to do down dog. Um, so we'll kind of break the pose down, regress the pose, make it like more accessible in pieces, and then we'll build it back up um, might make it even a more challenging version of down dog so that then when our baseline is done with down dog we've sort of got a good idea of what's happening okay sweet all right so go ahead and lie on your backs have your strap lie on your backs and have your feet up against the wall see how my heels are on the floor my feet are up against the wall i'm gonna adjust this so you guys can see me better yeah so feet up to the wall, lie on your backs. Sutta Tadasana, or a recline mountain pose. And just push your feet into the wall and really firm up your legs. If you've ever practiced with me, it's no surprise. I put big emphasis in almost every pose, <laughs> in some part of what the legs, the hips are doing. Today will be no different. So spread your toes on the wall. And that's like yoga 101. You're new and you're like, I do not know how to spread my toes when Allison says spread your toes. Then just keep practicing spreading your toes, right? 
None of this gets easier if we, if we don't practice it. And firm up your legs. Pull your right knee into your chest. And your goal is to always have a firm footprint on the wall. So notice I just had to scoot in a little bit. And then you can push left foot into the wall, re-extend your left leg as you pull right leg in. So if you ever lose connection with the wall even a little bit, scoot to the wall. Strap, grab your strap, and hook the strap over the ball mount of your right foot. And extend your right leg in. It's not uncommon that I start a class with some variation of this pose, the Sukhapati Bhusasana. Uh, it's a really great opening for the back of the legs. Different variations will get into the hips, outer hips, inner thighs. Um, but a pose like downward facing dog, there's big emphasis on opening the back chain, especially the legs. So if we can get the hamstrings and the calves more open, pre-down dog, down dog's gonna, gonna be a little bit easier. So firm up both legs, shoot sparks out of both heels, spread at all 10 toes. For those of you that don't have crazy tight hamstrings, like minor, I would say medium, <laughs> they're, they're not super open, they're not super tight, but you do your best to keep your right leg straight. Those of you with really tight hamstrings, you're gonna find out really quickly, in fact, you probably already know, down dog's gonna be a harder pose for you um, because, you're, because your hamstrings are tight and that affects your ability to straighten the legs. You're probably not going to be able to. I'll offer you variations. And it also can pull on the pelvis and the low back. So it affects your ability to, to kind of do what we would like it to do there. So ultimately, you do the best that you can. Always, right? Just take a few more breaths. And notice here, last couple breaths, how I'm trying to press right heel up higher than my toes. It's so subtle. It doesn't look like I'm trying very hard, but it's quite profound. Um, it's a good way to open the backs of the calves. You should breathe calmly, by the way. Take both ends of the strap into your right hand and slowly open right leg to the right. So the Supta Padangusasana 2 with the leg out to the side just, just opens more the inner leg, even that inner hamstring, inner calf muscles, inner, inner leg action. But you can start to work the muscles of your outer hip. So hug your outer hip in. You want to think about pulling your two sitting bones closer together. And all the while, push your left foot into the wall and push the back of your left leg straight down. So both back pockets are grounded on the floor. If the left side's popping up, you've opened your leg too far, you need to pull this leg up so you ground your left leg. Does that make sense? I'm sure you're, I'm sure you're answering me at home, right? Last couple of breaths. Slowly bring your right leg up. Swap hands, so left hand holds on a strap. Keep your right back pocket plugged, so it's still down to the floor, and just cross your right leg a few inches to the left. Ooh, I don't usually have to go very far. I have really tight outer hips and legs, most of us do. So you're opening this whole seam of the outer leg, outer hamstrings, outer calves, outer hip. Left leg is still firm. Notice my left foot hasn't changed at all. Push left foot into the wall. Push your left leg straight down and breathe. Take two more breaths.
spread your left toes. You've got a good view up there. So this is how you can practice spreading your toes. And then press left heel up more and peel your left toes down more. And if you're tight here and it's very hard to straighten your leg and your leg's kind of shaking, this like means your muscles like, what the hell, I've never, <laughs> never had to do this. Um, just slide your hands down and your leg might be more here, but, but you can straighten it or get closer. So it's not really about how close you get your leg. Mm, breathe. Your right leg firm, hold both ends of the strap in your left hand, slowly open your left leg to the left. Remember, don't tip over. This right leg doesn't change, so push right leg down, push the right back pocket down, and draw your two sitting bones towards each other. Push right foot into the wall, sharpen your left leg, and stretch out through your left heel. breath or two. Mm -hmm. Soften your left knee a little. Bring your left leg up. Swap hands. Right hand to strap. Straighten both legs. Keep your left back pocket grounded and just barely a little bit cross your left leg to the right. Squeeze your upper inner thighs together. That'll even more so open the outer left hip, outer left leg. You try to breathe like it's no big deal. This is really not. Like it's sure it can be really intense, it can be super uncomfortable, but it is like the scale of big deals, I would say this is rather low on the totem pole. Uh, last few moments. Make both legs really straight, you guys. Especially those of you that are like easily hyperextendy. Um, your work is always going to be more muscular engagement, super flexy people. So squeeze your thighs, pull your kneecaps up extra if it's easy to straighten your leg. All right, bring your left leg up. You can lose the strap for now. Put both feet on the wall and pause. So you sort of check out your new open backs of legs. Grab a block. So if you don't have one nearby, go grab it. And you're going to have it widthwise like so. Bring both legs up and put it between just just kind of right between your shins. Now, straighten your legs, flex your feet, spread your toes. See how my heels are right above my hips? So I'm not here, and I'm not here, but I'm here. Bring your arms all the way overhead and pin the backs of your hands to the floor. So your arms are straight, your legs are straight. Some of you are gonna look more like this. You gotta squeeze the block and do your best. Flex your feet, breathe. Squeeze the block. So your mission is to try to crush your yoga block. And you guys see my ribs sort of want to blast up off the floor. My low back, you could fit a hand under there. I want you to push your ribs down and like you could not fit a hand under your back. So pull your belly to your spine. Arms straight. If your arms are bent, you need to squeeze your triceps more. Pull your belly to your spine. Squeeze the block. Squeeze your legs, squeeze your arms. I know it's a lot of squeezing for three, two, one. Lose the block. So anytime I ask you to squeeze a block between your legs or your arms, that's called adduction or adduction, um, where you're adding rather, you, you bring things together. That's usually your inner thigh muscles. Let's do the opposite. So grab your strap. When I ask you to break something apart, like a strap, it's called abduction, abduction, where you're trying to bring your legs or your arms away from each other. So strap, the loop goes around your thighs. Let's just go 
Just go a few inches above your knees. And then try to break the strap so my knees don't go wider than my hips. Yeah? Straighten your legs, flex your feet, spread your toes, arms overhead. Same shape. This time, instead of squeeze a block in, break the strap apart. So this firms your outer hips and your outer legs, not your inner thighs. Break the strap apart, that's abducting your legs away from each other, from your arms and legs. And notice how this feels different than squeezing a block. It's using different muscles, that's why. Pull your belly to the floor, flatten your back, break the strap. Firm your arms, squeeze your legs, literally try to break your yoga strap for three, two, you can do it, try to break this strap, one, and release. Come on. So I'll keep using those terms. So remember to squeeze in is to adduct, A-D-duct, and to break apart is to abduct or abduct. It really just means when you squeeze something in, you're using your inner thighs, which we need in down dog. By the way, we need it in every yoga pose almost ever. And then when you break something apart, we need it in down dog, you're firming the outer hips. Both inner thighs and outer hips, sorry for the bad news, are weak for most of us, but that's gonna help us do poses that weight bear on the hands. It's really gonna help us do most poses. Okay, so go ahead and stand up and grab your block and your strap. We can do the same adduction, abduction with arms and legs. So take the block, flat side, put it between your upper inner thighs. So you can see my feet won't come all the way together because I've got a block between my thighs. So this is what I want you to squeeze. Remember that's AD duct, squeeze in. Literally like you could flatten your yoga block. And then take your strap, make the loop, measure so it's about shoulder width distance, as wide as your shoulders here. See how I'm measuring shoulder to shoulder. Then you're gonna take the loop, let me show from the side, you're gonna slip it right below your elbows. So you'll stretch your arms out like this. Squeeze into the block, break out against the strap. So you adduct your legs, squeeze in, abduct your arms, push out. Push your hands away from you. And then inhale, stretch your arms all the way overhead. So just like we did on our backs, squeeze into the block with your legs, inner thighs firm. With your arms, break out against the strap and avoid sticking your butt out, arching your back, but instead draw your tailbone down a little, pull your belly button back, breathe. Break the strap for real, squeeze the blocks, crush the block for three, two, adjust this loop a little bigger so you can step into the loop. Remember legs hip width distance, so now I'm going to abduct my legs, push them apart, and adduct my arms, squeeze the block. So put the block between your palms, so you'll look like so. Put a little bend in your knees, break out against the strap, you can't tell I'm doing it but I am, I'm trying to break my strap. Straighten your legs, inhale, stretch your arms up. Push into the block with your hands. Step back, you can see me. So break the strap apart with your legs. Push in with your hands. My arms are straight, my legs are straight. Breathe, belly back. Push in with your hands for three. Try to soften your shoulders, two. Good, in one, release. Lose your props for a moment. So, go ahead and have a seat, take a break. So most classes, the teacher's never gonna tell you all of those things, right? They're never gonna say in down dog, squeeze your inner thighs, squeeze your arms together, and at the same time, 
break your arms apart, break your legs apart. But ultimately that's what we want, right? In any pose we want inner thighs to be active and the outer hips. We want the inner arms and the outer arms to be active. So today, for today's purposes of course, we're, we're gonna get there. So, come to your hands and knees. Let's talk about the hands quick. So, I have yet to see in my career as a yoga teacher, someone spread their fingers too wide. So you're gonna wanna go for it and like spread your fingers as wide as you can when you come to hands and knees. So spread them super wide, the wider the better, and then turn your hands out slightly so that your two index fingers point straight ahead and they're parallel to each other. So there's that little turnout of the hands that helps externally rotate your upper arms, which is what we want, yeah? So turn hands out slightly, make sure your index fingers are straight ahead. And then let's work with the pelvis and our low back. So on your inhale, cow pose, drop your belly, arch your back, see I'm sticking my butt up in the air, look up, chest up. Exhale, do the opposite, cat pose. Push the mat away, scoop your belly, notice my, watch the low back in my, in my hips as I tuck tail round the spine, chin to chest. Do that again, move from the pelvis. Inhale, cow shape, stick your butt up, arch your back, look up. Exhale, cow pose. So we're putting our pelvis, do one or two more, into extremes positions. On the inhale, the cow shape, this is an anterior pelvic tilt. Exhale, cat pose, posterior pelvic tilt. You don't ever need to know that. Do one more while I'm talking. But know that down dog, your pelvis is actually in neutral. So it's not doing cat or cow. It's right in the middle. But unfortunately, because we all have super tight hamstrings, what happens when we do down dog is people's tight hamstring pull their pelvis into a posterior position so it looks something like this. So today we're going to work with Take the hamstrings out of it, bend your knees. Do cow pose, stick your butt up in the air, pull your belly back, and then try to straighten your legs. Now I'm more in neutral. So you have to sometimes back up, correct the issue to get back in. And sometimes you have to almost overcorrect so that when you get back in, now you're where you need to be. Yeah? So take your blocks, stand up. So now we've got the information of Squeeze in, break apart, and the pelvic tilt. Put the block between your upper inner thighs. We've done this before. Wall dog, it's my favorite down dog. So this is like down dog number one, most basic down dog. So you're gonna to wanna to put your hands on the wall right about as high as your hip. Again, spread your fingers, index fingers point straight up and they're parallel to each other. And then start to waddle walk your feet back. Look at my arms, they're straight. Until you get to about 90 degrees, your heels are under your hips. And then you want to hinge at the hips until you're at 90 degrees. Get your head in line with your arms. Now, for lots of you with tight hamstrings, your knees might need to bend and watch. You're going to probably be naturally sort of rounded here. So everybody bend your knees, take your hamstrings out of it, squeeze the block. Stick your butt up, arch your back like you were doing cow pose. Pull your belly back. Keep your cow pose. Straighten your legs. Squeeze your thighs. Push your hands into the wall. Don't worry about the abduction. Let's just imagine you got a block between your arms. Squeeze in, and you've got the block between your legs. Squeeze in. Push your hands into the wall. Breathe. Bend your knees, hands to hips, come up, pause. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you're starting to see if you bend the knees, get your hamstrings out of it, it's easier to tilt the pelvis so that when you straighten the legs, your pelvis will actually end up more neutral and not so tucked. Strap up, let's do the same wall dog, this time with our AB duction. So click the loop around your thighs. Remember, I want hip width distance. I'm gonna take my shirt up so you can really see my pelvis here. So, same thing, hands about hip height, 
Walk your feet back. Get your little tail out of the way. And then hinge at the hips. All right, bend your knees. Break the strap. You can't tell I'm doing it, but I'm doing it. Break it apart as if your life depended on it. Stick your butt up in the air. Pull your belly back. Break the strap, baby. And then straighten your legs. Push the wall away. Squeeze your triceps. Keep breaking the strap. Last moment. Break it, break it, break it. And then you can soften these. Inhale, come up. Whew. Hopefully you're already starting to see there's a little more going on in down dog than you think. Okay, so we've got our inner thigh, outer hip strength. We've got our pelvic tilt, which is neutral, but we sort of have to over-exaggerate it to get back into it. Then what about the arms? So we talked about the hands, right? So spread, and if our hands are turned in, then our shoulders are turned in. So we turn our hands out a little bit. Um, most common thing I see, people are really tight up here, right? We, this is like what we do all day. And so I tell people to do down dog, their arms are overhead. Guess what their ears are doing? So you're gonna hear this cue a lot, probably in most classes, is to soften your shoulders out of your ears. That's because you really gotta try to work triceps and not upper traps. So how do we do that? Poses like plank or hands and knees where we teach you to push the mat away. Do you see how that pops these shoulder muscles? Instead of sink, you push the mat away and then you can get your shoulders out of your ears. Now when our arms are overhead, they're gonna lift. That's like what the shoulder blade does, it lifts. So you let them lift, but you try not to wear shoulder earrings, but instead, I like the rule of thumb, like let them go up and then like halfway soften them. So you move them like halfsies away from your ears. So come to hands and knees, spread your fingers, Turn your hands out slightly. Don't worry about the pelvis yet. Just push the mat away with your hands. Push the pads of your fingers into the mat and lift through the center of each palm. Get your shoulders out of your ears. Walk your knees back, open them wide. Now I want you to think like you are gonna stretch the top of your mat away from you, like you could actually make your mat longer. And I, I'm literally, you can't tell, but I'm pushing my mat away from me as I slowly push it, push it, push it. I inch my hips back. I'm still pushing my mat. I can't push it anymore. And then child's pose, rest your head. But look at my arms. They're active. Firm your arms. Push the mat away. And then halfway, soften the tops of your shoulders out of your ears. Not all the way. Don't jam them down your back. Just have this. Squeeze your tricep muscles to the bone. Great. Come all the way up. Yeah. So let's try our first down dog. Not at the wall, but hands on the floor. Um, we'll use our block for the first round. So just like before, Flat side block between your upper inner thighs. I'm going to throw a lot of cues at you. If a third of them stick, then a third of them stick, right? We're going to break it down. So spread your fingers wide. Turn your hands out slightly. And like really push the pads of the ten fingers down. Lift through the center of each palm. There's your hands. Don't stop doing that. Push them out of way. Spread your shoulders and get your shoulders to soften out of your ears. Now lift your sitting bones slightly like you're gonna do cow pose, pull your belly back, squeeze the block, and then tuck your toes. Slowly lift your hips up as you stretch the top of your mat away from your head. Everyone bend your knees, take your hamstrings out of it, stick your butt up in the air, pull your belly back, squeeze the block, Slowly straighten your legs, push the mat away with your hands, stretch the top of your mat, and then halfway soften shoulders out of ears. Your arms are straight, 
squeeze, triceps, squeeze your block, and breathe. Hopefully you notice the squeezing of the block, what that does to your belly. It helps it pull back. It's magical. Because the inner thighs, the adductors, are the gateway, the key to your deep core muscles. Who knew? Take another breath. Mm, good. And then lower down. Rest for a second. So, if you're not on your hands all that often, it is not abnormal to be like, my wrist. Um, one school of thought, I don't disagree. The only way you're going to ever be more comfortable on your hands is to be on your hands um, more, right? Um, there, obviously, that external rotation, softening the tops of the shoulders, like the arm being, shoulder and arm being in the right place is going to help take pressure off the wrist, but that cue I gave to push the pads of your fingers down, it's almost like you're going to claw the mat. You find that little lift through the center of the palm. Um, that will also help, but like give it some time. Yeah? All right, same down dog. This time, we're going to do the abduction, so strap your thighs. You guys are going to be professional thigh strappers. Remember, legs hip width distance, come to hands and knees. Spread your fingers wide. Remember, you can't spread them too wide. Turn your hands out slightly. Practice. Push the pads of all ten fingers down. You'll kind of see your knuckles move a little bit. And then find a baby, baby lift through the center of your palms. Your arms are straight. Push the mat away. Get your shoulders out of your ears. Pull your belly back. Break the strap. Tuck your toes. Stretch the top of your mat away as you lift your hips up. Bend your knees, take your hamstrings out of it. Break the strap as if your life depended on it. Stick your butt up in the air. Pull your belly back, break the strap, guys, and then slowly straighten your legs. Push down through the pads of your fingers, and then have these soften shoulders out of ears. Those of you that have trouble straightening your legs, keep your knees a little bent. I would rather see knees bent Spine straight, then leg straight, spine like, like this. So bend, lengthen. You're trying to move your chest a little towards your thighs. Breathe. Good. Lower down. Lose the strap. You could probably spend a bazillion hours on this, and we could probably spend a bazillion more hours on those of you that are really hypermobile, the super flexi yogis of the world, um, that has really a lot of mobility in your shoulder, that's probably for another day, but your work is gonna always be to not go the deepest ever in every pose. Especially women, we're really more mobile in our shoulders, and that isn't necessarily a good thing. You really wanna have both the strength and the flexibility. All right, grab your blanket. Unroll it so it looks like so. And then start from the top and roll it up. So now we're going to go a little deeper into the hamstrings and down dog. See if that opens some things up. Sometimes by making down dog a little harder, it makes regular down dog feel easier. So once you've got your blanket roll, then put it, I'll show from the side, put it all the way behind your knees. Some of you have done this with me before. Keep it behind your knees and come up and sit. So what this is going to do is mash, sounds so pleasant, mash our calves and our hamstrings just to get a little myofascial opening. So we can stretch our muscles till the cows come home, um, but things like massage or even yin yoga where we get into the fascia a little bit better. We're using things like tennis balls or lacrosse balls or blankets or dowels. Those are, are going to further get into the connective tissue in a way that stretching just, just never will. So I'm a fan of using all of those things. So you're just trying to soften here. Notice what your breath is like. And you can even practice softening shoulders out of ears here because I promise if you're just normal everyday 
posture is like super tight, shoulders up to ears. I promise you, anytime you come to yoga and your arms try to go overhead, like this is this is gonna be this is gonna take years to unravel. So just try to prepare yourself for that. Try to soften here so that when we raise the arms up, we can keep them a little bit away from the ears and keep these muscles softer. Move the blanket back a little bit, just an inch or two, and sit back down. I can tell right away my right calf hamstring is vastly tighter. So work with that. If you notice one side is tighter, you might lean to that side a little bit. much longer here. This is a great uh, tool for when you're like watching a television show or a movie. It's like roll up your yoga blanket or get your wooden dowel and like match your calves for longer than, than what I'm allowing now. It's time well spent. So take some deep breaths. Last but not least, move the blanket back so it's just above your heels. Have a seat. Great. Move the blanket. You guys are still facing this way, so tuck your toes under. Keep opening the feet a little bit. That also helps open the backs of the legs. So tuck toes, fan favorite, sit back, broken toe pose, and then reach back and re-tuck your pinky toes under. And just try to sit. Interlace all 10 fingers in front of you. Spin your palms forward. Squeeze your arms. So notice my arms are straight. Remember, let's tricep back of arm muscle. You gotta hug that baby in. And then inhale, stretch your arms up. Look up. Push up, keep your hands up, chin down, look down, pull your belly back, and then look straight ahead. Squeeze your arms into your ears, and then remember, halfsies, soften shoulders halfway out of the ears. Release your arms, untuck your toes, point your toes behind you. If you're able, have a seat on your heels and just rest. If you're not able, Sit on the block. Hmm. So there's a lot we've covered. I will, of course, remind you, we've got hands to think about. We've got our shoulders to think about. We've got our inner thighs, our outer hips. Now we've got more hamstring and, and ankle, Achilles tendon length to work with. Yeah. Come to all fours. Spread your fingers, turn your hands out slightly, push the mat away, get your shoulders out of your ears. Remember, push down through the pads of the fingers, lift your sitting bones up, there's that, that cow pose, then pull your belly back. Tuck your toes, hips up, down the dog. Remember to stretch the top of your mat away, move your chest towards your thighs, and then everyone, walk your feet in just enough so it's a short dog, but I want you to try to get your heels all the way to the floor. Some of you are going to have to walk it in a lot. Others of you, like, you know, I don't I have to walk them in maybe like a foot's length in. So see, I've got my short dog, but I want you to pin your heels to the floor and straighten your legs. Push your thigh bones back, and then imagine you had a block between your inner thighs. Squeeze your inner thighs. Imagine you had a strap around your thighs. Break the strap. Try to spike your heels into the floor. And then just a little wiggle feet back. See if you can get your heels down. Thighs back, hips up, squeeze in your thighs, break the pretend strap, push them out of way and breathe. Wiggle your feet back again. Maybe your heels can stay down. Keep wiggling little by little until you get that point where your heels don't stay down and go right back to the point where they can. 
Last two breaths. Awesome. Come in. Best. All right. Okay. One more piece before I would say we're, we're done for breaking it down, at least for today. When we're sort of piecing the upper body, we've got all these little muscles that sort of surround our shoulder blade that help stabilize the, the shoulder girdle and sort of like our inner thighs and outer hips for most of us, they're not very strong. And so we weigh bear on our hands and people wonder why they're like, well, I do yoga, but my shoulder's jacked up. It's often because those little tiny muscles that we use to do down dog, chaturanga, plank pose, up dog, handstand, any arm balance, they're not trained well. And so one of the biggest muscles that we need to train, to activate, to engage when we do weight bearing on our hands is our serratus anterior. And it's a muscle that sort of connects shoulder blade to the, to the side of your ribs, kind of near your armpit here. You just have to kind of know this general area um, without getting too technical. So take your strap loop and you're gonna actually get it all the way up into your armpit. See how it's back on my shoulder blades? And then click it, ladies, it'll go above your chest and cinch it up. It's not, it's not the most attractive look, but if I were to like Incredible Hulk, it would feel like I'm gonna bust this guy open. So you see it's right under my armpit, above my boobs, back of the shoulders. So just sit and breathe for a moment. It should feel constricting, but not like you can't breathe. But if you take a big inhale, you should sort of feel right under the armpits, especially that sort of breakout action. Like if you were gonna do your best incredible hulk, right? You would you'd feel like you could pop the strap. So that's really under your armpit here is kind of those the serratus anterior muscle we're looking to activate. That's also the same whenever I say push the mat away. That's really what we're trying to get at. This is just makes it more obvious. So come to your hands and knees, spread your fingers. Push all the pads of your fingers down and then push the mat away and try to incredible hulk, break out the sides of your straps right under your armpits. Shoulders out of ears, lift your hips, belly back, tuck your toes, down dog. Break the armpit strap. Push the mat away. You guys feel that muscle under the armpit? Bend your knees, stick your butt up. Squeeze a pretend block between your inner thighs. Break a pretend strap apart around your thighs. Straighten your legs. Try to push your heels back and down. They don't have to touch the floor. In fact, they probably shouldn't. If they do, you need to take it longer down there. Push the mat away. Last moment. Three. Two. One. Release. Woo. <laughs> so, no big deal. I only gave you about 75 things to think about. So let's progress the pose. So my teacher Noah Maze and, and Rocky here, and they use this sort of idea of we regress the pose, meaning we sort of break it down, make it a little bit more accessible, more e easier to digest. So we break it in these little parts. We do our wall dog. We focus on one thing at a time. Now we're gonna sort of up the ante, make down dog a little harder, so that at the very end of this pose clinic, soon when we do down dog without all the stuff. It almost feels easier. We're like, okay, I got it. So fold your mat from the wall up to the top twice. So you've got a little mat here. And then you're going to need your blanket. Also, I sh should have mentioned, if you're not on a slippery floor, you should get on one. And you can bring your mat with you or not. You can just put your hands on the slippery floor. But you'll want to fold your blanket just like a big rectangle. And you want to be on a floor that it can slip and slide. Okay? We're almost there, guys. Hang with me. So toes tucked under on the blanket, knees on the wood floor, or your slippery floor. And then set your hands up on the mat or the floor, just like you would for down dogs. Spread your fingers, push the pads. Now remember your incredible Hulk strap. Try to break your armpit straps apart. Spread the shoulders. Lift your belly, lift your sit bones. Toes tucked under. This is where it's fun. 
Down dog, slippery style. You guys can tell this is like the shortest down dog of my life. So I'm gonna try to slide my legs back to my normal or down, my normal or my normal down dog leg. Try to pull the blanket apart with your feet. So there's the outer hips. This is why we did all that, because now I need it. Squeeze your inner thighs, squeeze your outer hips. Lift your belly, push the mat away, breathe. You're trying not to slide. I am a little bit. Do your best. Squeeze your legs. Try not to lose your shit. <laughs> and then lower down. Oh boy. Suddenly you need in all of that. You need your incredible Hulk, straightest anterior strength. You need your belly, pelvis strength. You need your inner thighs and your outer hips. ready to just do down dog without all the stuff? Okay. By all means, do another slippery dog if you'd like. Otherwise, you can unfold your mat and lose all of your props. Come to your hands and knees. Spread your fingers wide. Turn your hands out. Index fingers straight ahead. Push through the pads of the fingers. Find your imaginary incredible Hulk strap. Push the mat away. Lift your sitting bones. Stick your butt up. Lift your belly. Walk your knees back like two inches. Slowly tuck your toes. Up you go. Hey, oh, down dog. Push the mat away with your hands. Keep your incredible Hulk strap action going. And then soften the shoulders away from your ears. You should be able to wiggle wide away your head. Bend your knees. Stick your butt up in the air, pull your belly back, straighten your legs. Stretch your heels back, stretch your heels down, push your thighs back. Last but not least, pretend there's a block between your thighs, squeeze. Pretend there's a strap around your thighs, break it apart. Suddenly, down dogs like, shit, <laughs> there's a lot happening. Now you know why I'm like, it's really a rest, technically. Last breath. And then lower down, have a seat. Yes. So, <laughs> I swear. Super technical. It's not everyone's cup of tea. I could geek out on poses and do this literally all day, every day. It's my favorite thing, but I totally get this. not everyone's thing. But I do think it's helpful to learn a little bit more about these poses that we do all the time. So even if one sixteenth of that stuck in your head great. Like well, to me, one little tidbit for your tool belt of yoga knowledge, bring it with you to class forever, great. Um, but over time, hopefully little things we just keep adding to our tool belt. And then and then it's like actually really interesting. You don't have to make poses up. You just like spend time with these tried and true <laughs> poses. So just counter for a second. Interlace your hands behind you. Roll your shoulders back and just stretch your chest open. Keep your head in neutral. Pull your belly back. Squeeze your arms. Come to your back. I go for something that will open up the front of the hips and the belly since we did so much of that 90 degree shape as well as the chest. So bridge pose. Feet down, hips up, interlace your hands, tuck, tuck your shoulders. Breathe. And then lower down. Feel free to do another bridge or two. So to quickly review, <laughs> my, my hope is that like next time you do down dog, you just, you just maybe have a little checklist in your head. It's like, what do the hands need to do? What do shoulders? Remember this serratus anterior, tops of shoulders. What about my belly? What about the tilt of my pelvis? Inner thigh squeeze, outer hip strength, hamstring length. So there's lots of pieces, but maybe you can start to sort of like piece that together for your next yoga class or vinyasa class. So hopefully that was helpful. I'll do more of these. Um, we'll probably visit Chaturanga next, so be ready. It'll be fun. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.